please stand for the call to worship. <clears throat> Let us hold fast to the faith we confess. For we have a great high priest who has gone into the very presence of God, Jesus, the Son of God. Our high priest is not one who cannot feel sympathy with our weakness. On the contrary, we have a high priest let us be brave then and come forward to God's throne where there is grace. There we will receive mercy and find grace to help us just as we need. call upon the name of Christ are gathered to recall the story of the night in which Jesus Christ was betrayed. Are you prepared to come to the table of Jesus Christ, whose life was poured out for you? By the grace of God, we are. Are you able to watch with Jesus at prayer in the garden? Indeed, to struggle yourselves to be in unity with God's will. By the grace of God, we are. Then let us praise God, even in this hour of darkness.
The night Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. Take, eat in remembrance of me. Please pray with me. Loving God, you love the world so much that you sent your only Son to be our Savior. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, he provided for us the gift of himself in the breaking of bread. May we who receive this bread, his body, be strengthened in faith and renewed in the covenant until he comes again. Amen. And in the same way, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink this in remembrance of me, that Christ's blood was shed for you. Shall we pray? When we drink this cup, O oh Lord, we experience anew the presence of Jesus and look forward to his coming and final victory. Send the power of your spirit upon us gathered here and upon these gifts of bread and wine. May all who share in these gifts be made into one body and one spirit a living sacrifice in Christ. By eating this bread and drinking this cup, we proclaim Christ's death, celebrate Christ's resurrection, and await Christ's coming again. Please pray with me. At the foot of the cross, O oh God, we behold the suffering servant who gave his life as a sacrifice for many. For this, we are deeply grateful. Empower us by Christ's Spirit to serve rather than be served, to lose ourselves in loving care for others. Amen. Jesus prays in Gethsemane. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words, and once again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? 
enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, this man also was with him, but he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then, about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. <laughs>
it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting at the judge's seat, his wife sent him a message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you, asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who's called the Messiah, Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. Why, what crime has he committed, asked Pilate. But they shouted out louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that inst instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am an in innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, his blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Bar Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed over to be crucified. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him 
and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion, who had stood there in front of Jesus, saw how he died, he said, Surely this man is the Son of God.
Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. When Joseph brought the linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in the tomb, which had been hewn out of the rock, he rolled the stone shut at the door of the tomb. <laughs> 